Hello friends! I am back from San Diego, very happily so. Uh, I have spent the last few days in my bed, just chilling. Decided to give myself a little break, stare at my phone for a few days, which is basically all I did. I did some cleaning. I'm in a soul purge right now where I just want to purge my house. Been talking about this for a while, so I've been puttering around finding zones of my home to do that. Believe it or not, given this room, I have a very um, Spartan house. We don't have like a ton of pictures on the walls. We have like almost no tchotchkes around. It's because we have six cats and so things get destroyed. So there's not a lot of like stuff in my house, but there is stuff in here and which we went through, <laughs> but I also have stuff in my bedroom. So I've been going through that kind of thing and trying to like purge out all the things I need. Like I don't need an entire closet full of work. I wear jeans and a t-shirt every day. Why do I need a closet full of dresses? <laughs> I'm not gonna wear those, so I am giving them to places that give women clothes to wear to work a lot, stuff like that. I There are always charities that will take these things. Um, also, we have homeless shelters around, so I've been cleaning out like my facial care products and like the hundred extra toothbrushes I seem to have for my dentist, because I get my tooth cleaned more often than most people do. I go like three to four times a year, so I have like you don't need to change your you change your toothbrush every like <laughs> three to six months but I'll, I'll I end up doing it actually even more than that and I still have toothbrushes left anyway um so <laughs> I collect piles of those and give them away I don't know why this is a lecture on giving out your stuff away but this is what's happening right now anyway <laughs> I am back I think this week I'm gonna try to start the white stays the white zone is for the immediate loading and unloading of breasts no parking Okay, so I have some fabric that I can show you from the fabric district that I got. I had a little bit of a mission, and then I got a little derailed, but I didn't get too derailed. I bought a limited amount of, of fabric given my usual insanity in the fabric district, so you're all proud of me. <laughs> I went there looking specifically for black and purple, maybe silver, but I didn't find any, uh, for that dress that is like pondering in my head that I've been talking about for a few weeks now which is like fabric manipulation dress I don't know I needed I wanted it to be Halloween-y kind of but maybe not always so me I don't know anyway I bought some fabrics I don't know they, I don't think they all go together they could all be on the same dress they might not I don't know what's gonna happen yet it it seems fine to put these all in the same dress because I have seen some weird stuff with Victorian dresses <laughs> so I'm not weird about putting all these together but anyway let me just show you okay let me start with this because this is the only one that is like non sequitur it's just a dupioni that is color shifting like blue green shot I don't know I love it. I think it's beautiful. I kind of wonder if one direction is purple. Yes, one direction is purple. I can tell from here, so that's kind of cool. Is this actual silk? Don't think so. I'm gonna burn it. The guy, Michael, at Valentine's tried to tell me it was silk, and then I was like, fine, let me burn it, and he was like, okay, it's a blend, and I'm like, yeah, right, okay. So, the guys at the Fabric District lie to you, <laughs> so always ask to burn it, and then they'll tell you what it really is. I'm gonna burn it because I don't even think it's a blend, but we'll find out. Uh, I just thought it was pretty and I want to use it and I don't care if it's historically accurate. Okay, uh, here's my pile. None of these are coming out the color that they actually are. Like this is not, this is looking a lot very magenta-y on camera for me, like I can see through my viewfinder. It's actually a very dark purple. I like this guy because it has texture already. I got some black dupioni, only just a few yards, because I think there was only two yards on the bolts. Um, this is like a shantung, and this is much darker than it's coming across. This looks fuchsia on camera-ish, on the back of my camera at least, I don't know what it's going to look like in the video. But it's actually more actual magenta. And then this is like a dark aubergine color, again it's slightly brighter on camera than it is in real life. So... Yeah, this was just meant to inspire me for that dress. Still don't know what that's going to be, what it's going to look like, what pattern I'm going to use, any of that. So that's where we are there. Okay, so today I just wanted to get together what I have, what I need, start washing fabric, do that kind of stuff um, so that I can get started making my second set of stays because I would really like to get a white pair of stays going that fit me nicely and that are front closing so I can dress my own self, which would be real nice. So I think that is what I'm gonna get started doing. I also wanna like tidy up here because I sort of exploded. I had brought a small project down to Southern California with me and 
obviously didn't have time to work on it so there's all this stuff from that is still like out and about um, I have all this mulling stuff what would you call this batting <laughs> quilters call this batting I call this mulling because you can mull hats with it <laughs> so I need to take that downstairs so I just need to do a little tidying in here and get this place a little bit more sorted out and then get started on that so I'll be back when everything's ready to go and we're ready to start cutting out fabric a few people in the comments were commenting on last time I cut out all three layers and then I glued the top two layers together and they're like just glue the fabric together and then cut it out so the reason I didn't do that last time was because I think that's really hard on your scissors because that glue is no joke like it's in there it will definitely like I don't know about using my fabric shears or not <laughs> so I'm gonna try it I'm gonna use a pair of fabric shears that I don't mind having to go get sharpened again <laughs> or like kind of wanting me to get sharpened again so that I don't like you know ruin a perfectly sharp pair of scissors on them I just think that's a little bit more than fabric shears are designed to cut through so that is why I didn't do it last time uh, but I will try it this time and I'm sure it's gonna have like a, a marginally better result <laughs> for it but although my stays were just fine last time so uh, hopefully we will make some improvements to these days based on what we learned last time largely it was just in the straps entirely the straps were the problem everything else was golden so I'm just gonna run around my room now and figure out what I've got and I'll be right back okay we have some options here this is already washed natural cutile and I could use this although it is very like it's not really showing up here by the way can you tell I have cats look at look at that hand man Whew. this is more yellow than it's showing up on camera for sure um, and I have had like Regency dresses where I had my long corded stays underneath and you can see right through that <laughs> to this color so I think I do want to use white and I do have some white cutile which I need to wash then so I'll probably use this for one layer and then I have this white twill which when I was taking the Alexander Cheesebro corset class he was saying this was like actually strong enough to be a foundation layer for his corset like it doesn't use cutile at all it just uses this which I am like whoa because it's, it's like it doesn't have a lot of stretch but it definitely has a little bit of stretch I'm like wow I wouldn't have I wouldn't have guessed that anyway um I could use this for another strength layer and, and the reason I would do that is because this is much softer than this and then I'm trying to figure out well I could do this for the internal and that for the external and just have it be two layers which it's only designed to be two layers. The third layer is completely optional and it would skip me the step of having to like either cut it out separately or glue it and then cut it out. So like that's a viable option. But I also was looking at these days and I just love the way the linen looks. Like I think it's so, so pretty. I guess I should go get some linen. I have some white linen there but that linen is too thin for this I mean I, I guess it doesn't really matter because it would be flat lined onto you know either this or that somehow so maybe it doesn't matter that it's that thin but it also is really fine linen so it doesn't quite have this like I don't know this texture on linen of real linen is like there's just something about that texture that I really love so I'm trying to figure out do I care because this is underwear <laughs> and and want to go to the length of putting another layer on to have this texture I guess I have to go get some linen and find out if I have really white linen because a lot of my linen is kind of off-white it's like a little yellow actually I have to see if I have some really white linen and if so how that would look so let me go dig around in the garage and find out okay these are my two whitest linens a lot of them are like sort of natural color which is like a more yellow color even these are different I don't even know if this is gonna pick up on camera like this is kind of like optic white like it's really white and this is just white <laughs> this is definitely diet pill linen and you, it is thin like you can see through it and stuff but I do love that texture this one also has a very good texture this one also has a very good texture but it's even more thin I think yeah that's very see-through I think I'm probably gonna go with this one I think I am gonna use the linen because I love the way the linen looks I love the linen look so I do love the linen look so I think I'm gonna go ahead and do the the gluing 
of, of the layer onto the other layer and just deal with the consequences of that decision. Uh, the first thing I need to do though is cut um, pieces that are big enough of all of these so that I can throw them in the wash and let them get washed and shrunk and all that stuff. So I'm gonna cut that stuff, put it in the wash, and I'll probably see you back here tomorrow for a bunch of cutting. Hello, it is not tomorrow, it is the next day. I decided to spend like a day and a half playing Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild because I haven't played it in like nine months and frankly I'm like a bit sad with the world right now and like mm, sewing wasn't where it was at. So I am a compassionate to myself person who cuts myself some slack and it's like you want to play video games go play video games <laughs> like feel free. So that is what I did. I have my fabric all washed. It has been pressed once. It needs to be pressed again. So I was thinking about the why didn't I attach the two layers together and then trace and cut out the fabric. And part of why I didn't do that is because you have to trace the boning channels on and especially through black fabric that was not gonna happen. I am gonna do a test once I get this stuff ironed out to see if I can do it after I put two white layers together because it might shine through a little bit easier and whatever. It was kind of moot in the end because I figured out how to do it just using like math and measurements and stuff and like marking indicators and then just connecting them and it, realizing it didn't really matter if it was perfectly exact. So I'm probably going to do that on this also. So I am going to, I think, try to put them together before I cut the pattern out and stuff. but. We'll see how it goes. I decided I do want the linen. I love the way that the linen looks and the way the it, linen feels and stuff like that. And I'm gonna put the coutille on the, the, the coutille and the linen are gonna go together. That's part of the like tracing through problem. Why don't I just trace through the linen and then <laughs> lay it on top of the coutille, attach them together and then cut them out? Because attaching them t together is going to require some amount of ironing and that will take it away because I am going to use iron off marking, which should be fun times. <laughs> <laughs> and will probably require me to remark things here and there, so we'll see. In some ways, it's actually better through the camera than it is in real life, which is funny, but yeah, it looks like I'll be able to see the lines, so that's great. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is spray starch the linen layer. It's a little overkill in this instance, and so I'm gonna put it onto Coutille, but uh, because it's so squidgy, and this, particularly this linen is real squidgy, I feel like it'll just make the attachment process a little bit easier. It's just a matter of putting this stuff on, on and ironing it, so like, it's not that big of a deal to do, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, I have the coutille laid out on top of the linen, and what I'm gonna do is use this attacky spray, which is different than basting spray. There is base basting spray. I kind of suggest you use that. This is what I have here, so I'm gonna use this. I used this actually to glue the petals of my butterfly skirts together. So I have a bunch of this on hand, but this is actually the last of it, and I, there's not a ton left, so hopefully I make it across this. Okay, we have good adherence, so that's good. I'm excited about that. Now I'm going to go ahead and just trace the pattern onto this. I liked the way that the Taylor's wax went last time, so I'm going to use some Taylor's wax, obviously not white. Luckily, I have all sorts of other colors. They do not come off though, so like, that's gonna be on the edge. <laughs> so like, you gotta think about this a little bit. Like, I'm not gonna mark the lines with those, obviously, because it's not gonna come off. Uh, and this is a white, white, white corset. I am washing my hands constantly. <laughs> so this is a very snug cut, including this line being the same line. It's actually kind of awesome to have that happen because you can just cut once. Uh, also, it helps you. If I know this is on grain, then that one will be on grain for sure. So that's great. Uh, I am using the grain of the coutille since this is the fabric that matters. <laughs> and this is less squidgy, this linen, but yeah. <laughs>
I, it doesn't have to, this is me showing you that I mess things up all the time. I don't need a stomacher. There's no, I, that's not, I don't, that's not something I need. So this whole middle section doesn't, I didn't, I, yeah. Cool. So it's tight for nothing on this side. Rad. <laughs> but I will get that done and then on the other side it will be much easier. Okay, we are all drawn out and I'm going to go ahead and cut this layer. I do have to do the same thing to that guy. Uh, and I'm going to use some old scissors that I don't mind running through a bunch of glue and starch. Cool. Okay, they're all cut out and I have two things I need to deal with. And this is part of the problem of dealing with white. Okay, so on this one, I don't, you guys can kind of see it. It's right here. There's just a band of like discoloration, which is annoying. I have enough leftover linen, no problem, but the cotille is not so much. Uh, I could probably pull this linen off, which I think is what I might do. Cut a new linen layer and then attach that back down. So I'm going to try that. This guy, I don't know if you can see that. There's a hair under there. <laughs> so annoying. So I'm going to detach these. Like I'm going to come in or down maybe and try to grab that hair out with a pair of tweezers. It'll just not be attached right there, it's fine. The glue will come apart on its own over time anyway. I can already see it on the other one happening, especially with, with wearing it and it being like, you know, curved and whatever around my body, so I'm not too worried about that. I will just be stay stitching around all the edges anyway, so. All right, so I fixed both of those things. I did end up just like attaching one to another. You just have some like, you know, weird edges. It's fine, because they're all in the same allowance. It doesn't really matter. Everything in the middle looks great. Uh, that hair got removed. <laughs> Fun times at my house trying to like do this without getting hairs in there. That's just not a thing. In fact, I feel like I have hair all over my face all the time. Like I'm just constantly itchy right now because cats and it's shedding season and it's pollen bloom right now. It's crazy. So anyway, um, I am now at the point where I need to mark the the tabs i'm gonna follow that dashed line that's right there and mark that onto the surface of my outside fabric but i think i'm also gonna do it on the inside fabric uh that is like stay stitching so that the tabs have extra strength i'm gonna do that and then i'm gonna sew that in some of you expressed missing chats so i thought i would do some chats for you and let you know what's happening right now and over the next little bit while i mark these tabs you may be wondering what's up with the the blue tape right here. That's just washi tape. I when I do stuff like this, I try to like maybe washi tape the the stuff together so it doesn't slide around so much. That that usually makes me happy. What's happening here? Oh no, nope, I went off track. But that's okay. I'm using a Frixion pen to do this so that I can just iron it off if I make a mistake or you know whatever. I did this error, but that's okay because it's in the it's in the safety zone, and also it will iron off. Um. Okay, so what is happening? Okay, so what is happening here? Well, next week is a my wedding anniversary, so that's pretty cool. Um, I think it's thirteen years. I want to say we got married in two thousand nine, so that makes sense. Anyway, right after that. Gigi, who many of you know from the fact that I do costume and color with her, is gonna come here and hang out for like a week at my house and we're just gonna like sew and we might go to the aquarium, we might go to tea and hang out with people, that reminds me I should get tea reservations. Where does this stop? Sometimes it's hard to see through, so I actually stop way up there. This line looks like really not clear. But I think that's largely because it's doubled up right there pretty tight. Anyway. So Gigi's going to come and she's going to stay for almost an entire, no, actually a whole week, yeah. And then that Thursday, she's going to go home. Is this where this stops? Yeah, I think so. She's going to go home and on the same day, I'm going to load myself aboard a plane, scarily enough, and head on over to Seattle where I will see one of my best friends from high school, Zach, who funnily enough was my dungeon master. He has been on this channel before. I actually went to the Monterey Bay Aquarium with him in a video. Uh, so I'm gonna go hang out with him for a weekend 
and then come home and then we have tickets to see Rent, I believe, at the theater that night. All of these things are terrifying to me, yes. Yes, yes they are. <laughs> and and they will be done with a mask on, for sure. However, that is not the end of that. Because that will take me into like, I think the 10th of that month, that sounds right. Which is, wow, is this really that much easier to, oh, I'm trying to do it on the paper side. <laughs> oh, I'm not good at this, okay. I'm like, wow, that's real easy to see. That's because it's on the paper side. And then, Pretty soon after that, I'm going to get in a plane <laughs> and go to New York City because we have been thinking and planning a trip to New York City to see The Music Man with Hugh Jackman since like 2018, I think, maybe 2019, I don't remember. Anyway, so a bunch of my friends and I and Chris are all going to go see that play, musical, in New York City one weekend we are also we also have tickets to see who is it daniel craig do macbeth that seems pretty crazy so i'm excited about that we're gonna go see six i've seen it but almost no one else in my group has so i'm excited to go see it again i went and saw it with Gigi and erica when we were there for new york that was fun so i'll get to do that again i'll take you guys Definitely to New York. I don't know if I'm taking you guys to Seattle. I'll, I will definitely be filming while Gigi's here because that seems like it's filming week, so I should be filming. Um, although I know all of you guys are going to be like, it's okay to take time off and all, and I'm like, I know. Sometimes I don't take time off because I don't want to take time off. Um, <laughs> that is a thing that happens, guys. So, anyway. Uh, I think Gigi and I are, are going to sew a dress for her, maybe, so there might be filming of that if she's comfortable, and if not, I will possibly also be sewing something, we'll see. Right now, my Patreon subscribers are deciding what the project is that I'm going to do after this project, so I'm very excited to see what they decide. So far, making secret pants is in the lead. I do have a ticket to a Nevers event which the secret pants would be great for. Uh, however, it is also on my best friend's birthday. <laughs> so I don't know if I can actually go to that event. I want to just like peek at this and see what it is. It's good to get the lay of the land on these things first and just like check it out before you start doing things you might regret. <sighs> oh, can you guys even see this? Can you even see what I'm doing past my hand? No. Is that a useful camera angle? I'm going to move you. Ready? You're moving. Oh my god, you're moving. Okay, that might be a more useful camera angle, we'll find out. Sorry about the learning camera angles and how to YouTube while we're doing it live. That's how this works. Anyway, so New York should be a fun trip. And then I get back from that and that Nevers event will happen. So if I do end up going to that Nevers event, the Secret Pants would be a great project to have. Uh, in second place right now is a pirate shirt which I do want to make. I want to find out how Bernadette Banner's quote-unquote tutorial is. She clearly stated in that video it's not a tutorial. <laughs> Every time I talk to her about it, she's like, it's not a tutorial. I have, I'm actually going to use a Bur Burnley and Trowbridge uh, patter pattern like video walkthrough as well to like learn how to do it. I have a Dumas event that I'm thinking about going to later in the year which requires a, I think it's a 16th century shirt, but honestly, I looked in Patterns of Fashion, <laughs> thanks to Constance, who sent me pictures of that page, and it turns out that a 18th century shirt and a 16th century shirt are, like, not that different, and I don't really care enough to, like, worry about that difference, <laughs> so it's gonna be, like, a hybrid shirt is what I'm getting at here, and I'm cool with that. So there might be a pirate shirt, there might be some secret pants in our future, depends on what Patreon decides. If you would like to become a Patreon member, you totally can. There's a link in my video, every single video, and if you don't want to become a Patreon supporter, that's fine too. I am happy to just make videos for everyone. My Patreon people are super awesome though, and it is um, a little bit of an exclusive area, but it's not, it's not that much different than what happens here. I make them one special video a month. And how did I do this before? Okay, yeah. 
like how does brain work? I make them a special video and then there's a couple things that I do every now and then. I do giveaways there, I do polls there, stuff like that. But it's not that much different than here, so you're not you're not missing out on much, I will tell you. I should be hyping this up. I should be like, everyone join Patreon. But I'm not. I'm mostly like, if you want to, rad. And if you don't, that's okay too. We're living in a difficult enough world. <sighs> they do help me to make sure that my bills get paid so I don't have to freak out and get a job job immediately, which, man, do I appreciate that. I didn't even think about slash try to do the other side, the lining, so I should probably do those also. It actually doesn't tell me to do that, it just says do it on the outside edges in the pattern, but last time I did it on both and I, I felt, you know, a certain sense of smug satisfaction about that, so <laughs> I think I'm gonna do that again. And we're back. And we have the lining pieces here, which I'm, I'm gonna flatline. I, anyway, I was thinking about perhaps I should make these stays in the way that Red Threaded instructs you to make them, <laughs> where the pieces are separate and then you do, and you bind everything even separately. And then I thought, I don't want to. <laughs> uh, mostly because that back side seam that's like, oh, you guys can't even see me, I'm sure, but like back here would have, at this point, six layers of fabric. Yeah, three from each one. And then they want you to push both of the seams backwards, and I'm just like, oi, that's a lot. <laughs> I don't know if I'm down for that. It seems really thick back there. I might do the straps the way that they that they suggest them, although I hate the way those look. <laughs> like, I hate that they're not bound all together. I don't know, maybe I'm just gonna make it my way. This is a lesson in, like, you do not have to follow the pattern instructions if you don't want to. It's your garment. Do what you want. And so, I'm usually a pattern instruction kind of girl who's, like, very into following directions. <laughs> I am a Capricorn's Capricorn. Uh, but in this case, no. I think that means I'm getting better slash leveling up at my craft <laughs> when I'm like, eh, I don't want to do it the way you want me to do it. I'm going to do it some other way that I know that I like. I get it. It makes fitting way easier, but I know that these fit is the thing because I've made these stays before, right? I, I'm going to make these stays again. Like, I still want to make the purple pair. There's like no part of my brain that doesn't want those purple stays. So I feel like that's gonna happen too. So you guys are gonna have to sit through this one more time. <laughs> I did correct the pattern for the strap and I cut it at an even steeper angle and then I haven't shortened it yet. I'm gonna shorten it once it's on my body. I'm just not gonna bind it or put the grommet in it until I know where the strap head is gonna be but is that, is that even a word? Did I make that up? It's not actually called a strap head. It just looks like a head because it's round. Anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that all at that point, I think. So I can get them some length that I actually like. I have acknowledged that I have to take apart my black ones at some point and shorten the straps so that I can get a better fit on the straps. They're fine. They stay up, it's okay. But you know, I would like it to be better. So anyway, I think that is all I have to say. Oh, now I have uplighting as well as downlighting. That's interesting. Hmm, maybe I should get uplighting all the time. I feel like spooky, you know, when you sit in front of the campfire and you're like, ooh. Okay, now I'm gonna have the opposite problem I normally have, which is trying to show you white on white thread. Um, anyway, I have stay stitched the bottom of all of these and all of the double stacked outer shell fashion fabric. Linen, can we just say linen? Um, and then for these ones, I also went very close to the edge all the way around the thing. So in case the glue fails, because you know, it can and sometimes I get violent with my my projects and cause it to fail uh, no it won't it'll stay together and it's nice and perfectly snug this is a, a really great way to if you have basting spray and you need to flatline something it's a really great way to flatline something because especially if you use that roller thing it like it makes it perfectly flat and then you can attach them together and then they are one piece forever anyway um, so now I guess we're gonna move on to sewing the things together. Hello, my next task is to, well, there's two tasks and they are competing with each other. So one, I need to sew the corsets 
like the front side and the inside together as two separate pieces um, and then also attach them to each other. In the meantime, I also need to mark the voting channels. <laughs> and I'm using Frixion pens because I want to sew on the outside. That is the thing that I want to do, for sure. Uh, because I like the outside stitch on my machine better. But because I'm using these, you can see what's going to happen here. If I mark my voting channels and then try to press my seams open, the voting channels will go away. So. I think I have to sew them together first and then mark the voting channels, which does not sound like a party, but it's what's going to happen right here. So I'm going to get the outside and the inside sections sewn together separately. I'm going to mark most of the voting channels while it's like a big flat piece, so that should make things a little bit easier. And then I will sew the f inside and outside together so that I have one big tube, essentially. And then I'll try to fill in those last couple of lines. And then we can go ahead and sew the boning channels in. Okay, so a pro tip is when you're making corset to lay your pieces out. So you always know which one is which. This is more so with Victorian corsets than it is with these because these pieces are different. So it's pretty easy to tell. Victorian corsets, like, the pieces all start looking the same and you start going a little cross-eyed. This is your natural inclination because that's the front. Yeah. Actually, because this is one long strip and the backs actually are the pe like they are sewn together, I am going to go ahead and reverse this so that the fronts are on each end and the backs are the ones that are in the middle because that is the order in which they will go together. Okay, this is more like what it's going to be like. So I'm going to go ahead and sew these all together so that they are one big piece. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the insides. Okay, that is the lining and this is the outside. And I'm going to go ahead and try and put some, some lines on here. Should be a fun time. <music> Okay, this guy is done. You can see that I made a mistake here. So I just marked which lines I don't want to follow and which ones I do, and then continued these to the ones I do. Um, even these are actually kind of in the wrong place. I might add another one inside here, like that's a thing I might do. Although, I don't know, I don't think your center back needs more support as far as like holding in your yourself. But anyway, it's totally fine. Also, just a reminder, Nobody but the people who work at Red Threaded know where these are supposed to go. So if you make this and you mess up one thing, whatever. Just make sure it's the same on the other side and you're all good to go. Like, I made sure that this one and this one were the same and that these guys met at the same place because everything kind of like comes off of those. So that was important, but honestly, it doesn't matter. Like, nobody's gonna be as long as they're the same, it's fine. And also, if you just don't like where they are, you can also just move them. This is your your thing. Okay, so I'm kind of burnt out after drawing all these lines. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna quit for today. Tomorrow I will come back and I will attach these two things together. Hopefully not erasing all my lines. I also need to, like, over here, last time, it the grommets didn't go in well because there was too much stuff here. This is already going to be thinner because that layer is heckin' thin compared to the last one, so I think it'll be fine. But I might trim it down so it comes to, like, here, but doesn't go all the way across as the same as this one will. So, I need to fiddle with that a bit. And then I will possibly even spray glue these together just a little bit to get them a little bit bonded together, and then I will do all the boning channels. And then there's boning. And then we have to put on straps, grommet it, bind it and we're done so they, I say this like this is super easy and simple and like 
these tasks will only take five minutes. No, these are the longest tasks, but we're well on our way. <laughs> okay, here's where I'm going to try to explain what I meant earlier. So this is going to be, this is like the inside, this whole thing will get flipped inside out. So this is the right side of the lining and this is the right side of the outside. So this will be in the middle. And I took this guy and I trimmed it down so that it doesn't cover what you may or may not be able to see, but I will open up so you can see where the grommets go. Do you see? Okay, hopefully that makes sense to everyone. And here, for everyone who said that I should get rid of my ironing board, is why I don't get rid of my ironing board. A, it's a really good place to hold stuff. Uh, yes, I could put a shelf here, but then I couldn't put an iron here. <laughs> uh, but I need it for stuff like this. This is like the, the best case for this. And I stitched it inside out. Wah wah. This guy was on the wrong way of the lining. So I'm going to have to take the whole thing out. It is double stitched on each side too, so that sucks, <laughs> but we all make mistakes. Okay, we're back to right sides out. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I've sewn this seam like three times now. Kind of annoyed because they're double stitched. So they're stitched once with a back and forth at each end and once again with just straight stitches. Whew, that's a lot to rip out. Okay, so I have this turned and I did do the first row here like that has happened so it's fairly secure over there which is great i'm gonna give you a few tips on doing this that i learned last time slash have just like in my knowledge base and then set you up for a time lapse the first thing is you will notice i have pinned this in strategic places all over the place they tell you on the instructions to use basting spray if you want or whatever and not to use pins because they get caught and i totally agree with them however the reason i've done this is because of the second thing i'm going to tell you which is the first thing I do is I go do a structural seam on each panel. So like, I will do this one, and I will do this one, and I will do maybe these two, and I will definitely do these two, and this one, and so forth. All the way across, just one on each panel first. What that does is it like seals the whole thing together. <laughs> and what I'm trying to avoid is if there's wonkiness between the lining and the outer fabric, so say there's like extra lining somewhere because it's slightly too big or whatever, what I don't want is for me to start on one side and like push a wave of fabric all the way across the corset slash stays. This works on Victorian corsets also. Um, and get like a big bubble at the end. I would prefer little, little wonky waves throughout if there are going to be any. There usually aren't and you can usually, if they are and they're small like that, you can kind of iron them a lot and they sort of go away because the fabric shrinks. So I recommend doing it this way where you put in essentially roadblocks all the way across first and then you go through and you fill in with all the other um, boning channels that you'll need. So I'm only leaving these pins in long enough to get those in and I'll probably pull them out as I go across because I don't want pins to be in here. It's annoying to have them. They're right. They do snag everywhere. They catch on you. It's annoying. But these are kind of strategically in big open places. I don't need to run over them at all. I will run near them, but not over them. So that is one thing. Another thing that I have learned over the years is to sew all of your seams in one direction. <laughs> don't go down and back up and down and back up and down and back up. It <laughs> There are times at which going down and back up is actually good because it avoids warping. But in this case, no, don't do that. <laughs> For corsets and whatever, I prefer to go all in one direction because it just pushes the wave all in one direction. You don't want a wave going across, but you do want a wave going down. <laughs> so that is a good tip for you. Uh, the last thing that I wanted to mention is that because I'm doing this as one full thing instead of several pieces like they want me to, it's kind of hard to do this all on your sewing machine by the time you get to the end. I have deep throat space on my machine so I can roll this up and sort of do that. What I will say is to do the hardest seams that you have to do first while you're fresh and then go to the easier. So what I'm going to do is roll it all up so it's the most annoying to deal with at the very beginning. And then when I'm tired at the end, because this is exhausting, especially because another tip I have is to just go slow. I put my setting down to like turtle <laughs> and I go duck, 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 through this. And it's real tempting to zoom through, but ugh. It, that causes problems, just trust me. So I would say do the hardest ones and the most annoying ones to deal with first. Just get them out of the way while you're fresh and you have energy and whatever because when you get to the end you're super tired.
This is me sitting at my desk, which is a weird new angle for this channel. Hi, room. My room is not as big as this looks. <laughs> um, so that was me putting in all the anchor points. So I did do all of the beginning channels and all four of the middle back channels. And then at least one on each side of basically all of the panels because I want to make sure that they're super anchored down and now everything looks super smooth and that's great. And now I'm going to sit here for another, oh that took 27 minutes including a bobbin wind to do so it wasn't that long and I was going pretty slow like the time lapse probably looks like most of you actually so. <laughs> I've seen people on their industrial machines just like cranking these out and I'm just like nah I can't do that. So I'm pretty careful. I can go maybe a little faster than I am but I don't know that that's a smart idea. Every time I do that, I sort of like, it starts getting wonky, and I'd rather have them perfect the first time. So, I'm just gonna carry on and do the rest of these channels now. I'll be back. Okay, so I've done this first panel, and I do encourage breaks while you're doing this, by the way, because it will end up hurting your shoulders because you are in a weird position and like trying to hunch. I left, I took it off after this first panel because I leave these tails very long in the front so that I can pull them through and tie them off in the back and if you do this on this for too long you get like a nightmare scenario of you running over your tails everywhere so I usually do this first one and then I push the tails in and then I'll do like maybe these two and then push all the tails in because um, they'll be I push the tails in at all the places where they are not coming off the edge so like here and then here and these two are separate enough that that kind of works out okay but I don't know anyway so I do take breaks to push the tails in and also lets me like not be hunched over my sewing machine like trying to guide these specifically through <laughs> I'm dying look at my hair oh this is what happens when I'm like in there I got to okay anyway I'm gonna show you the satisfying thing now <laughs> y'all ready for this oh yeah this just makes me so happy. This is like erasing things off my board, but better. I can get like really anal retentive about it. Oh, it's so good. People who have like are hearing this conversation while you're watching it, like all your significant other partners are probably like, what the hell are they watching? This girl sounds like she's uh, enjoying herself. I am enjoying myself, sir or madam, or they. I was thinking about that the other day. There is no sir or madam for a they person, a person who goes by the pronoun they. And I'm like, oh, okay. Maybe we should eliminate using sir or madam then so that we do not have to note that there's no they. Okay, we have a 12-step program. <laughs> Gonna go to Joanne. I'm gonna get a half inch wide single fold bias tape times two. Then I'm gonna grommet the closure. Then I'm gonna cut the boning for the bottom. I'm gonna grind the bottom boning. I'm gonna bone the bottom. I'm gonna do the bottom binding. Cut the top boning, grind the bo top boning. Bone the top. <laughs> Fit the straps like obviously onto the button, the thing, do the top binding, and then grommet the straps. This is my 12 step program and I, I'm a genius and didn't write them in order, but it's fine. I've identified all the things I need to do and I've identified what order I need to do them. I feel good about this. I'm currently encompassed by this mess, so I'm gonna clean this up tonight before I knock out for the day and then I will call it a good day. Okay, well, I have been looking at my list and I think it's a lot of stuff that has to get done and it's gonna take a lot of hours because I know last time I think I spent like 20 hours binding. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna be spending a lot of time doing that and I also have to stop and clean my house and stuff because Gigi is coming on Thursday and it is currently Sunday. My anniversary is tomorrow, which means I'm not gonna get very much done. And I feel like if I try to fit everything into this video, It'll come out like sometime next month. Um, so I think I should just stop here and 
finish this in the next video for you guys. Hopefully that will not be forever. I will be filming some stuff with Gigi because I think we're gonna maybe make something for her while she's here too. So I will continue binding. I'm gonna work on this today so I'll, I'm gonna immediately stop this video and then just start another one right away. So you should, you should get full coverage on making this. <laughs> That's not a big deal, but I'm just like, oh my God, I have so much footage ready. Uh, so yeah, this seems like, why am I always trying to put everything in one video? I think it's because everybody else puts one thing in one video, but that's not the kind of video I make, but it's the kind of video I watch. So actually that's not true. I watch lots of vlogs. Okay. So I'm giving up on the idea <laughs> of trying to do this, uh, in a way where I can put it in one video. And I think that's perfectly fine. So I will catch you guys next time. Please leave me comments about what you guys are watching, listening to, looking at, all that stuff. Commentary on the process so far. Oh, I went to Joanne, as you may have seen, and I got bias binding. I only really need two of these, but they had buy three, get two free, and I can always use white. So I got an extra white, and then I bought two purple <laughs> for whenever I do the purple stays, because, you know, those are... Still a thing I'm also going to do at some point. Additionally, like every plan I have right now for the entire year might change soon. <laughs> I got a call from a friend who wants me to, to go on a trip and I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'm ready for a trip because um, that trip is overseas and that trip is on a boat <laughs> and it's a boat that Dandy's going to be on. So I had sort of written off going on Dandy Wellington's cruise. But I feel like I'm thinking about it, so I need to do some research. I will come back and tell you guys about his cruise and all the stuff that's going on with it. I will leave a link to it down below in case anyone wants to know about his cruise, but a bunch of my friends are going on that cruise and I'm kind of like, hmm. But it's in October. We don't know where COVID will be. We don't know where me mentally will be about COVID. You basically have to fly to England and then get on a boat for seven days and that's scary I mean obviously if I went I would be like fully masked and stuff but I don't know I'm pondering going on the trip I'm also pondering going on the trip and like hanging out a little bit in England beforehand because I miss going to London and I'm going to New York next month so if the numbers aren't horrible I don't really see a difference between going to New York and not going to London like Yes, the flight is longer. <laughs> I cannot drive home if something happens, but oh no, I'm stuck in London. <laughs> uh, actually, that would suck because I would have to pay a lot of money for a hotel and like not be able to enjoy London. That would really actually suck. So it is definitely a thing that I am fairly like I'm considering it and also I'm fairly like heavily concerned about it when I'm thinking about it. So I have to weigh a lot of pros and cons, but it is something I'm thinking about. But it would also adjust everything I need to do for like the next year. <laughs> no, the next six months because the trip isn't six months, but it's a vintage cruise. And like, well, I don't really wear vintage. Um, I think I could probably make some, he's, he's thinking anything from like 1900 to 1940s, but I think you could slide in with 1890 and 1950 and no one would care. And you know, those are things I, there are periods in there that I do like and would wear. So it'd be cool to make some stuff and be able to wear it on a cruise ship that would be fun if this was not pandemic times I would be all over this so hard so uh, I'm pondering it it's a thing I'm thinking about um, are any of you guys going on that trip do let me know because that's a, that would be interesting how do you feel about that my mom went on a cruise and she said everything was fine and they were really good about regulating people and like everybody wore their masks and all that stuff so I just don't know how cruises that are originating in England work. I don't know how people on cruise ships behave vis-a-vis -vis masking. Like, I don't know what the rules will be in October, right? Because they changed. Like, I asked Andy what the protocol was, and he said, you have to be vaxxed for sure. But, like, the rest of the protocols keep changing. Um, like, every cruise that goes across, because it's constantly going back and forth. So, oh my gosh, my hair again. Why always with my hair? Um... Anyway, so I'm pondering it. It's a thing. Apparently I'm working out this problem on camera too. Fun times. 
I don't know if I'll do it, but if I do, I, I also might just sit on it a while and think about it, which is probably what I'm going to do is just ponder it. My husband made Marge noises at me when I, when I brought it up, so that's not good. Um, but I am very interested in it, so... Yeah, it's a seven day cruise. It is in October for sure. It has him and his 10 piece band um, and it is on a cruise ship that's full of regular passengers and some people who are in the, on the Dandy Wellington cruise. And so we do private events. We, I'm already talking like it's we. Um, <laughs> there would be private events for like dinners and teas and concerts and dances and stuff like that. And they would like show, they show you how to do dances and things like that. But also just like generally perusing around in costume on a ship that's like, you know, art deco -y. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I don't know how I will feel about it in October. And that's actually the bigger problem is like, what if I panic and bail out, right? <laughs> like that's a lot of a lot of dough to put out for that. So anyway, I will tell you more about the cruise next time when I have more information about it and can share that stuff with you. It's all online. I just haven't looked it up yet. I will leave the link that I'm going to look at on down below for you if you also want to check that out. Um, but yeah, let me know if you're going on it, what you think about that concept. Do I think the pandemic's gonna be over by October? No, no I don't. Am I willing to wear a mask through the whole thing? Yeah, totally. So, I don't know. I don't know. I'm thinking. Okay, well that was my deep thoughts with Noel <laughs> segment for this video. Uh, I hope you guys are doing really well. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know what you're watching, what you're listening to, what you're reading, all that kind of stuff. I suppose everyone is on the Brid Bridgerton bandwagon right now. I didn't, I saw, like I said, I saw 38 minutes of season one and I was like, no, this isn't for me. And I bailed out. So I haven't obviously watched season two, but everyone seems to be really excited about it. What am I excited about? Moon Knight is coming out this week, which I'm really excited about. It's a new Marvel show. I did download seven or eight books based on recommendations that a lot of you guys left me. I do know that I got the uh, Reverse of London series and a few other ones that like everyone was talking about. So I, not the, the whole series, just the first book, but I did, I did get a bunch of them. So I think we're, we're fairly well set on books for a little while, although I'm still just listening to podcasts right now. So I am watching the rapey show. <laughs> so Outlander is happening. So far, they have shown the last rape that happened uh, only in the season opener, like, you know, last time on uh, thing. So so we've gone, I think, three episodes and no one's been raped yet. So that's really exciting. Um, why do I do this to myself? Why do I watch TV that I'm like, I hate this? It's just like, I'm, I'm, I am actually hate watching Outlander. Like, <laughs> I know people love that show. And also, I'm like, no, I hate that show. And I, I can't stop watching it. I don't know why. I can't get there with Bridgerton though, so <laughs> anyway, um, I'm very happy for all the people who are happy about Bridgerton being out though, um, and I'm very happy that their, you know, their diverse casting is really, seems to be pretty well done and well received. There's been a little bit of criticism about it being like, not completely accurate and whatever, and I'm like, it is an alternate universe, it's not supposed to be historically accurate, so, but it is valid criticism for sure, so those things are happening. In the world I'm trying to think if there's something else i can't think if there's another i think there was one more show that i was really like interested in it happening again and i can't remember oh i know what it was gentleman jack is coming back next month and i'm real excited about that that show's great so okay that's enough babbling <laughs> i will talk to you guys next week hopefully with another video and where i finish this up maybe <laughs> Maybe not. And hopefully Gigi will be around. She comes on Thursday of this week. So hopefully you'll see at least a little bit of her. I think we're going to make something for her maybe while she's here. So there might be a bit of a video about that. Who knows? We'll see. Okay. I'll see you guys next time.